put it up the league. So we are playing um, Light Up the Stage and Skewer the Critics Burn. So these are the new two cards that came out. This one lets us exile the top two cards of our library and exile, um, and then we can play it until the, uh, our next turn. And it uh, is spectacle for one red if we deal damage to them. And then Skewer the Critics um, and three damage to anything normally for three but if we can get spectacle we can do it for just one the rest of the shell is pretty standard we got four swift spears four bolts four spikes one lava mancer four guides four eidolons three searing uh, four searing blazes four charms and four helixes the lands are three sacred foundries uh, and two inspiring advantages for the duels we got ten fetches three mountains and one random at runes uh, in the sides here we do have two paths Three rest in peace, three skull cracks, two smashes, three searing bloods, and two wear and tear. So pretty um, streamlined deck, and let's go see how strong it is with the new cards. I actually just got crushed by a uh, a skewer deck on Monday when I went to go play modern um, at our local gaming shop, and that player um, actually cut almost all of the two drops out of the deck. Um, and had just an extremely streamlined version of all one drops. Um, they did still keep the Rift Bolt, interestingly, because that's one of the cards that people have been cutting in place of the Skewer. And it, it was his reasoning behind it was that he's able to uh, suspend Rift Bolt and then get Spectacle off next turn and then just kind of go off and then always keep his uh, lands coming from the light of the stage. So I thought that's an interesting concept. I mean, uh, depending on how this goes, we may snag that from him and play that version of Burn later on. Because um, he's been doing very well with it, he says. So this hand's got more lands than we would like. We almost never want to go above um, three lands. But at the same time, if we were to go down to six here and drop a land, uh, I think we would be keeping a hand with Swiss Sphere Spike and Searing Blaze. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and keep this. Urborg into an Inquisition. Most likely taking our Swift Spear. It's gone, and we're just gonna go on the land and let's spike them. We're going to hope to drop this idol on, but if they drop a relevant threat, we're going to Searing Blaze it. This is most likely 8 rack, right? Nope. Okay. Seems like an interesting list. I don't really know what they got going on here. They've been two Marsh Flatses. Okay. Um, I think we're just going to do this. Grab it. We'll grab a weapon and we'll drop this idol on and just pass it over. Uh, we have the Sacred Foundry already in hand for the Helix, and um, so that's not really an issue. discard a arid mesa or a sacred foundry when they uptick the wave one i'd rather just send it all their way so if they can okay, drop a creature for the searing blaze that'd be great we'll drop the sacred foundry because we can hold the arid mesa up in case we want to use searing blaze on their turn Gideon, okay. They're gonna make. 
like a 5 5 instructable, but it has. Yeah, that's odd. Okay. Um, if we helix them, we're going to bring them down to 11. Lily will keep upticking here. We can uptick it one more time. We're going to have to drop the air mace. If we draw a creature, though, the goblin guy will be able to send it towards Lily. Hmm. I don't feel like we're in the position not to just send it their way. So. Alright. So, random map represents another two points of damage. I don't want to discard that. But if we don't play the Air Mesa, we're not going to be able to uh, Searing Blaze them. Um, and they are doing Gideon activations. If they can make a 2-2, we would so much prefer that, because then we can just shoot that, and then hit them, and then random map next turn. No, because we, we would lose it, so. We're going to go the air here. Um, we're going to lose the random map ruins, but then we're going to be able to um, activate the Searing Blaze on a creature if they do pull one out there for us. Okay, they're just going to Inquisition. Unfortunate for us. Um, the Lily uptick, we lose the ruins. And they should just start beating us down for five. I'm going to hold off on the air mesa just in case we do get a um, Searing Blaze. Right? Okay, so this is pretty nice here. We're able to light up the stage. And we can hold off on these if we need to. Um, here we can just play the guide and hit their lily so they can't make a sack it, and then next turn drop the spike. turn clock right now for being dead and Lily is not doing anything to us so we're just going to try to take it out and if we would have hit the Gideon it would have just gone up to 5 so then the Boros turn wouldn't have been able to kill it so do it so we are done here okay so they didn't have any creatures they're playing so I don't feel like we want to have too many searing blazes I'd rather bring in the paths for those Gideons their graveyards seem to be relevant and they didn't have any creatures for us to hit with Searing Blood either. They didn't do any life gain with Skullcrack uh, for it to be relevant. So I think we're just going to run it like this. Um, and this hand's pretty sweet. We're going to go pretty high value and we're going to see, we're going to put these skewers to work.
drop the swift spear. So we could go Spike here, then Skewer, but I think I like the line more of um, Goblin Guide, Swing Swing, and then, well, I love, yeah. Getting the most amount of creatures on board seems the most relevant here. So let's go Guide. I'm not going to go Spike, because next turn I can go Spike into Skewer, where, and I'm only going to give up one damage in case that I don't get the creature, then I'm going to get stuck with these Skewers in hand. So we're just going to go Swift Spear here, and we'll spike them. And then just swing with Don't know what they could play to keep themselves in the game here. it out and we're just gonna run it right back all right creature heavy but we gotta light up the stage give us some pretty sweet value as long as we can connect our extra so this is pretty solid we're gonna keep this Take whatever you want. I think we're pretty happy. If they take up that at stage, that's fine because we probably wouldn't be casting that until like turn three anyway. Yeah, so advantage, so spear, beat them up. Spear, then a guide, and we'll go to the beatdown plan. You're gonna have a Lily next turn. That line of the sage definitely would have been able to push us over the edge, but. We're not bad right now. We got three creatures on board, skewer in hand. Two creatures on board, skewer in hand. One creature on board, skewer in hand. <laughs> okay, we're gonna drop 
with the swift spear. Looks like they have So we are going to want to just cast this right now so they can't get their hands on it. Swing with both. I think we're gonna hold the tarn in hand, and then that way, if we need to, we can send the spikes somewhere else. But Shambling Vent's probably going to get a problem if we don't uh, become a problem here if we don't uh, get the ability to take it off the board. Lonely, and then they're going to get rid of ours. Not a great spot here because everybody will start getting two life every turn. And that's really going to put us out of range of being able to kill them if we don't draw a threat. Like right now, if they hold it off the block, we'd be pretty happy. But I think they're going to activate and start swinging at us. Yeah. Now, if we can get a creature, I guess, right now to take out that Lily or a spell to take out that Lily, we'd be better off, but we have a path. We get lucky here and they activate shambling and swing because they don't want to get rid of anything in their hand from Lily. No. I still need to get something on the board to pressure them and take out that vents if we want to stay in this game. Down to seven if they activate that vents, which they should, and they'll go up to twelve. That's a swift spear. Past my turn, that was a mistake. There 
in a pretty good spot. And that tarn's not going to do it, so that's over. Oof. No good. Definitely close, but able to apply a little bit more pressure. I think we could have been able to see if we can steal that game, but unfortunately with just how that played out, we weren't able to apply enough pressure. Going against the Squee Goblin. Seems like a solid hand. Couple creatures, couple spells. if it's 8-whack. What is this? Does work play Faithless? I didn't think they did. Oh yeah, it's work. Okay. So this is were. I think getting Eidolon on board as fast as possible is probably our best bet. Because it's going to deal the most damage to them. Yeah, it might be Lantern Control, but okay. They were just looking for lands and didn't get there, so. So we can take out these Searing Blazes. And we're going to bring in the Smashes and then the Wear and Tears. I think we're okay with the rest. Oh, Lava Mancer is not that. I think we're going to shave one Lava Mancer. Mm, no, I think it's the persistent damage there is enough. Yeah. Uh, rest in peace is pretty relevant against them, but I think we can race them fast enough. and 28 cards. Don't know what our opponent means by that because they kept their hand. And they just did. That's kind of weird. This seems solid. Two guides into a bolt and helix and we have a lava mancer as well. So we'll keep that. They're already down to four cards. Yeah. Not happy, I don't think. Maybe we'll mulligan them back up. Nope, they got a mox. Just give them one card. Dark Slick. Not bad. And then they got a Sword of the Meek. Alright, they're going to kill one 
guy. We're okay with that. Right down to a dark slick and a, I mean a, a dark slick and one unknown and then a sword on top. So we're gonna drop this lava mancer and then next turn we'll be able to go charm and helix or I mean charm and bolt and I think we have enough damage here that we're just gonna be pressured with too much. For them to come back. Two swords of the grave. Here's super relevant, so I think we're just going to Because we're able to go Boros Charm into Lava Mancer, and then next turn go Helix Bolt, and then um, Lava Mancer. So lose that, and then we're gonna bolt them. All right, we got the helix. Put them down to two. Jump into our third match. So I can definitely understand why the opponent that I played on Monday kept in the the rift bolts. Now, just seeing that they don't need enough. Uh, one any more two drops in their hand because it can be awkward with skewer just seeing those different options available to us we can just suspend the rift bolt and just get multiple triggers uh, i kind of feel that already uh, swift spear is a little awkward with skewer because i want to cast it before combat and if i don't have another spell to go off with it i can't do it so um, i feel like i'm leaving damage on the table as a result of the awkward sequencing with it
opponent does not want to join the match. Oh my gosh. All right, they joined last second. All right, creature into a bunch of spells. We're good. One less land would have been, been even better, but we'll take it. Kind of a burn spell or something. See what our opponent's got for us. Mm, Arbor Elf, okay. We're happy with that. Oh, okay. Aaron Mesa. We'll grab Mountain. And we are going to Searing Blaze. Is they're most likely on Ponza. Hope you're out there <laughs> still. Can't save it in response to that prowess, so I have to let it go. But very good chance we just have our opponent here. They're gonna be already down to two at this point. Sit back. Blood moon, we will helix them in response. Oh, you and your girl have hex proof. All right, cannot do that. Turn, see if we can get a burn spell and swing so we can have lethal. Yeah, it's not looking good for him. We're definitely being held off though. spell here would give us the game.
stage then. Guess we're going to land into another light up the stage. And we will bolt our opponent. They're on our rhythm Ponza. <laughs> They're playing our deck. I kind of want them to win now. <laughs> All right, we're gonna hold the helix in case we get a searing blaze. Because they're just gonna Inferno Titan give it haste and then kill us. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! kill us. And they're going to hit us for... Oh, I guess it was one short. Burn spell. And burn spell. No! <laughs> This is it, though. Oh. Okay, so I think we want the Serene Bloods just to have the um, higher chance. I don't think we necessarily need the Eidolons here. They should be bringing in... Do we want to blow up their enchantment? I know I want to make this swap. Hmm. They should be bringing in some sort of life gain as well. So why don't we bring in one skull crack? And we'll run out like this. Hmm. Well, actually, let's cut out the lava mancer and play the skull and the skull crack. Alright, so we do not have a creature here. If we can get one more land, this hand could get out of control. So we've got to light up the stage, but if we don't get another land, this hand's going to look pretty rough. I 
I think we're gonna have to mull this. There's just too much that can go wrong without us getting another land. We don't have a creature to really get that sustainable damage going. This is better. And we gotta switch spear on top. So on our turn, we're going to go Swift Sphere, bolt the Arbor Elf, and then swing at them for two. Yeah, I didn't realize it gave us, because um, it never came up during the matches, that it gave ourself um, hexproof. So, with that being the case, I think that's like, you're right. I think it was a mistake to cut those. So, I think if we try that list again, we'll probably put in a second or third copy. Oops, that was a misclick. Spike them, hold up the searing blood. I'd like to get another spell here, because then we can hit there. If we can get like another searing blood, another um, searing blade here, we can hit that spell break and make them really get punished. Yeah, I think the land destruction is a big deal. Like our deck is supposed to be around land destruction, and the fact that we didn't have it, um, some games you could just really feel that. as well. hold something off, but that's not going to be enough. So all that we're going to be doing is putting them up to 8, and we're going to go down to 2, and then, yeah, that's game. Oh. rough. We should have had that first game. <laughs> oh. So 
So you guys want to see the four color wear deck and then the electro end deck on Sunday? Is uh, I think what I'm hearing. But I think that'll be a pretty fun combination. Yeah, I think they'll be good. I'll try to see if uh, I can get two good lists for those. I know you. Uh, I already got the Electro list sent to me, so won't be a problem there. And I'll just grab a pretty recent uh, and relevant four-color word deck. Taking a good bit for us to find an opponent. Four spells, three lands with a creature on turn one. We'll keep that. A star and an earth is mine. Those look nice. Get another land, we'll be able to Searing Blaze, Searing Blaze. Um, otherwise, we can Bolt. We can wait for them to swing, Bolt our own thing, and then try to finish them off. Hmm. Doesn't seem great. We, we should be able to get a win here, though. If we get another land, we just win if we Bolt them now, so... If we get a spell, we should have the win too. As long as it's a one drop.
Swift Spear here. I don't think we'll do it, but if they swing, I think we'll have to crack our Tarn and shoot our own creature down. Because if we swing right now, we can't do enough, unfortunately. Yeah, I definitely think that seems like a solid plan for the uh, Rhythm Ponza deck. And we can uh, try that out. position either. This one is over. Definitely don't want the searing blazes here. Do want the skull cracks and the smashes. I think I'm okay with cutting a lava mancer. we want to bring in the uh, wear and tears here it's I think it's enough to slow them though so why don't we bring in two of them and we're gonna cut out um, since we're lowering our curve here for I mean our spells here to hit them and bring in some non spells but why don't we cut a skewer and we'll cut up uh, one stage <coughs> That seems solid. Now they go Swift Spear into Double Spike, or if they do drop a uh, an artifact like an Expedition Map Return, we'll be able to take it out with the wear here, which would be really nice. So we're, we seem to be lowering our, well, we're not lowering our creature count, right? If we are cutting all that and swapping it out. Um, Domri was finding us threats really well, so I really enjoyed Domri in the version you sent me.
Alrighty, I think here we're gonna go Spike, Eidolon, Swing, and then next turn go for Spike, Spike. That's very true that it can. Um, a couple of the times, though, just being able to dig for me um, felt more relevant just because you're going so much deeper, grabbing up to two creatures. Um, drop an Ugin, they might be alive. If they drop a Worm Coil, they'll definitely stay alive for a turn unless we draw a Burn Spell. Our opponent's gonna drop a Thought Knot here. We don't have another spell in hand, so they're just looking at nothing. So, they have something to stop the creature swing. I would imagine we're not here, because if they have a... If they have a spatial contortion, they'll still die because they'll die to the trigger. So it worked out. And we'll run it back like this. How many Chandras and how many Dombries would we be up to if we did if we did that way? This hand has a lot of potential here, so we're gonna keep this. One land's gonna just make this hand just go crazy. I think that's fair. We can do a 1-1 split and then we can uh, see if that is better and then just test it based off of that and how we're feeling about it. So. Do they not have a payoff here? I still could use a land. Yeah, you're not wrong that Chandra's ult is more game ending. It's just one of those things where I almost never bank on ulting with a Planeswalker. Um, I just consider it icing if you do. So I only ever care about the first and second ability when I make any of my decisions. And whether that's right, I don't know. I just That's just how I've always felt. I've got a World Breaker. Thought not. Thought not's pretty good against us in this hand. Yeah, 
Yeah, for sure. Just gonna swing here and see if they block. Getting another thought knot. Yeah, if that's the case, I mean, we, uh, it's just whether or not you want to try out the Domri and get things going and see if it's worth the swap. If not, I think just keep it with the Chandra. Yeah, Chandra's dig ability is always relevant where uh, Domri's can miss or get a subpar creature, so. creatures on the board. I feel like we want to make it so they can't attack us, I guess, and then try to, but we can put them down, but no. We'll just, we'll just load up the cre creatures on the board. We're not swinging, but we can make it though when we swing. It, it would be worth our, our while. Yeah, stick with the 1-1 split for now, and then we can, uh, we can see if it just ends up being much better to go one way or the other. The fact that I just throw in blisses is probably a good thing for us at this point. So we need to draw a little bit more burn, the more time they can give us the better. hold back and just kill off our board and not put any pressure on us at all since they're at a pretty reasonable life total I suppose. I thought they might have swung with the uh, 
one of the creatures there and try to apply some pressure and then hold one back and then have the ability to shoot something down if we did anything, but they're going on a pretty conservative game plan. can swing and they'd have to block and give up their ballista well, otherwise we get two damage in. Looks like they got a frag tusk. But we know they don't have any green sources yet, because I know they have the to the skull crack as much as possible and leave it open because otherwise they're going to drop that thrag tusk and we're going to be in a really bad spot. But having 12 damage in hand is really nice for us. Another land down. See if we can get there next turn. If they draw a green source, they'll be able to world breaker and exile the idol. Uh, looks like they don't have that yet. yourself experts just seems great. Alrighty, entering this last one. Yeah, they have to do some main phase gifts instead of being able to gifts at the end of their turn and then go off.
And thanks for everybody that's joining. If you've never been here before, I really appreciate you stopping on by. Uh, tonight we played uh, Tamir Burn and I mean Tamir Moon, and now we're playing Skewer Burn. Uh, I'll be uploading the videos for this within a couple days. Um, you can check out the videos on here on Twitch uh, TV slash uh, Unstable Voodoo, or you can also check out my YouTube channel. I put all of our content on there, and I try to stream every Sunday night. And right now we're going to be streaming every Wednesday night at six o'clock. So For sure, man. I appreciate you coming and hanging out. I gotta get up myself pretty early, so definitely see you soon. Oh yeah, check out the punts. I play that deck miserably. I definitely need to get the uh, punt counter going on for me in here and how many times I have messed up. <laughs> Helix. I think we're gonna just drop the guide and pass it over. Uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. I love me too. Take out that Mantis Rider first. This is kind of beating the crap out of us, so I think we'll just pass it over to them away. Just an off chance to name Helix, and then we are pretty screwed. Let's 
go Eidolon here. Or we can go Helix into trying to set up light up the stage. Not against that, honestly. Okay, I don't seem to be putting too much pressure on this though, so Eidolon could do a lot of work for us. So why don't we do that? Mm. Yeah, I like Eidolon here. We'll just let it do the work for us. And then we can take out a threat next turn such as Thalia and then swing our way in. it over. Hold up Helix and take out the Mantis Rider. Seems a little swing. Okay, there we go. I think we're okay with double upping on the Thalia. Because we're not really in a position not to block. Because if we take this, we're going to have a 9. And then next turn, it's going to be pretty painful for us. That's gonna let us cast just more spells, so I think that's where we wanna go. But first we're gonna trade. I think here we wanna just kinda of clean off the board a good bit. Uh, we don't have um just certain blood is in the side, so I think we want to helix the. No, if we helix the meddling mage that's um, on that, it's gonna. The spell's gonna get countered. So let's hit this one with the Boros Charm. We'll drop a Swift Spear. And we'll pass it over.
very painful for colon down a good bit. good for us. Add one. Yeah, we block those two, we're still gonna take it. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna concede here. And in this match we want the searing bloods for sure. the pats are needed as much. And a lot of the answers going to let us just clean up the board a good bit. The slower burn spells here, I think we're going to cut out one light and then two skewers. And then we're going to run it like that. Here, so we gotta ship this. Uh, this seems reasonable, so we're gonna keep it. And we don't need another lance, so we're gonna send that to the bottom. Pay the life. Goblin guide. And yeah, start swinging. Here. We're gonna be in pretty awesome shape to just mess the clock up there. Hit it with Helix, hit them for another four. Then go Boar, or we can go Boar's Charm. Yeah, let's swing and then just Boar's Charm them here. If they block the guide, we'll trade. If they block the Swift Spear, we'll eat their Mighty Mage, so. And if they don't block, okay, that's the block.
we're just gonna swing here, see what they do. going to be chump blocking here. I think we just let them chump. but if they want to cast any other spells this is going to make it painful for them and then we can try to go for another creature swing here. If we get a land we'll be able to go Swift Spear into Helix which will be not bad at all. Is our opponent deciding? Oof, not a bottom. Getting some the Mantis Rider swing in with the team. Have to block. Probably trade with the idol on. so we can get there. Oh man, that's an arc. 
champion. Reflector Mage. Bouncing our Swift Spear. spell though. Another Mantis Rider will do it. For sure for the monks. They can just swing with the Mantis Riders. folks well that's going to be it for tonight uh we'll be back on sunday and we'll be playing four color war and then the electro end deck so thanks for hanging out really appreciate it and we will see you guys sunday at about six o'clock